In this video, I'll be covering the factoring technique known as factoring by grouping. Sometimes you'll find that there isn't a common factor between all the terms in your equation. So this is where the next technique comes into play, which is called factoring by grouping. The idea is that you're going to be dividing your terms into two groups and looking for common factors from each group. Let's see an example. In this first example, you can see that there's an M in three of the terms, there's an N in two of the terms, and there's a number four in two of the terms. So this means that there isn't a common factor between all four terms. So in order to tackle this question, we're going to divide these terms into two groups. So the first group is the first set of terms, m squared minus mn, and the second group is the second two terms, 4m minus 4n. So let's get started over here. Let's only look at m squared minus mn. So completely ignoring the other side, let's look for common factors between these two terms. We can see that there's an m in both of the terms and there's nothing really else we can take out. So we'll write the m and when you factor out the m, m squared divided by m is just a single m and mn divided by m will just leave you with n. So this is as far as we can go here in this side of the equation. Let's take a look at the other side, 4m minus 4n. So what do you see in common here? There's an M here, an N here. Those can't really be taken out, but there's a four in both terms. So let's factor out the four. And when you divide both terms by four, you're left with M minus N. Okay, this is a good start. Let's write all of this all together. So putting this into one equation, we have M multiplied by M minus N. And then here we have a positive 4. We didn't write the positive sign originally, but we know that it was a positive 4, not a negative 4 that we factored out. So we write the plus 4 multiplied by m minus n. What you should notice is that there's an m minus n in the first part of the equation and another m minus n in the second part of the equation. So this means that m minus n is a common factor in both of these terms. So let's continue by factoring out that m minus n. And with the m minus n being a common factor between the two terms, we just write the remaining terms, which are m plus 4. And this is your final answer. So you might be a little confused at this stage. How did these suddenly come together as two factors? Well, let's go back a bit. Let's pretend that instead of an m minus n, our equation had x's instead. So if that were the case, our equation would be mx plus 4x, replacing the m minus n with an x. From here, you can see that x is the only common factor between both terms. And if we factor out the x, mx divided by x is just m, and 4 divided by x is just positive 4. So that's x multiplied by m plus 4. And if we go back and replace our x with the original m minus n that we took out, we're left with m minus n multiplied with m plus 4. And that's the exact same answer that we obtained before. Once again, we can see that we have four terms, and there isn't a common factor between all four that we're able to remove. So let's take a look at the first group together, and then we'll look at the second group together. So for the first group, we have 3x plus 12. So the common factor is fairly simple. We just have a factor of 3. And when you divide 3 from these two terms, we're just left with x plus 4. For the second two terms, we have a negative xy minus 4y. We can't forget about that negative sign there because that'll be important later when we put everything together. So here you can see that the y is common to both terms. And let's just factor out that negative y. And the first term becomes positive x. And the second term becomes positive 4. Now let's put this all together. We have 3x plus 4 minus y x plus 4. And you can see that the x plus 4 is the common factor between both of these two terms. So when we take out that common factor of x plus 4, we're essentially dividing it off of both of these two terms. So 3 multiplied by x plus 4 divided by x plus 4 will leave us with just 3. 
And the same goes for the second set of terms. So we're just left with a minus y. And this is our final factored answer. So now that you've seen two examples, it's important to know when you should use factoring by grouping. The first hint is that you have four terms, not three. The next thing to look out for is common factors. There will be no common factor between all terms. Or on the flip side, you might have a common factor initially. And once you've taken that out, there's still a few things in common and you still have four terms remaining. Finally, one key thing to look out for is the order of your terms. Sometimes you'll be given a question that looks like it can't be factored. Here, if we divide these terms into two groups, you can see there's no common factors between the first two. We have a three and a four and an X and a Y. And the same goes for the second two terms. We can rearrange them to get 3x plus 12 minus xy minus 4y. And since we've seen that example, we know that it can be factored. So this is just a little thing to look out for.